Hey, what's up guys? It's Burns. Uh, we're gonna try something new. We're gonna start talking to people, all uh, form, shapes, walks of life, and cover a wide array of topics. Uh, talk to some professional athletes, adaptive athletes, friends, family, and get their take on um, disability, people's perspectives on um, different things, how things are set up, how it could have benefited them as children. Uh, but we're going to just uh, explore together and hopefully meet some cool people and talk to some cool people along the way. But uh, once again, it's Burns. First interview I got here is with um, my buddy Carl Mower. Um, he's a real good, solid guy. So we'll roll tape here. All right. What's going on, buddy? How much? How you doing? Uh, just we, we spent what 45 minutes trying to set up this meeting just now. Yeah, probably uh, about that. Yeah, hey, thanks for agreeing to do this. Um, you're actually the first guest that you know having on this uh new um thing that I'm going to be doing, going to be talking to different people, all different walks of life about uh you know disability, their views on different things, tennis, adaptive tennis, just the uh, societal views, things like that. But um, and the main reason I wanted to have you on here was I know um, we kind of grew up with similar situations, um, but different. But, you know, we each have a story that started, you know, around the time of birth. And, you know, uh, we got involved in tennis in one way or another. Um, but I was really excited. Uh, the USA TAP Open in 2016, uh, you actually helped us out a lot because uh, we had like four months really, we were running so far behind to get that tournament set up. So like when the, uh, you know, invite came out, you sent your bio. And so then I was able to send it to everyone like, you know, South America and everyone else, like here's, a, here's an example. So that was pretty cool. And it was also really cool because, um, you know, we, had, we talked a lot and, uh, as far as tennis goes, that when I was looking for programs, I couldn't find any for amputee standing. So I started one in Houston and then got invited to go international. So just started traveling internationally. But, uh, you know, I was the only American and, and it was, uh, you know, that you're, you're the gringo out there. You know what I mean? Especially yeah. South America. Yeah. I'm so, sure that, um, uh, was, for I'm me, sure that was hard work. what was that? I'm sure that was hard, hard oh, work. I mean, to be honest, no, not really. Uh, yeah. Tried to make friends and just be an ambassador. And I mean, uh, it's hard to be the uh, uh, hunter and the host at the mm -hmm. same time, if you will. But um, no, yeah. So it was one of those where I saw all these great South American players and players from around the world. And I was so amazed that when you had entered the tournament and I was so excited to see Americans coming and I didn't know what to expect. I just saw the South American guys and the other guys like from Europe, but man, when we were at tennis express and I was like, just walking around, I heard a crack and I looked back and there's Carl, just like you were belting it, man. And so, I think, uh, I think they had what was a, a demo court set up so you could try equipment and stuff out. So, uh, some of the guys, uh, had taken out some rackets and things like that and we're hitting some different sticks and different equipment and, so it was, yeah, it was, it was fun. It was a good time. Yeah. But, uh, my, my draw, uh, my jaw dropped a little bit because I knew I might have to play you. And I was like, this guy's going to kick my ass, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, no, it was really cool to see, you know, yourself, uh, Matt Bulow, uh, some of the other guys just out there. Um, even Sandra, she was one of two females, you know, I felt terrible for her, but, um, so, I guess that was your real, was that your first ever experience or time playing in a tournament with like standing adaptive or against other amputees? It was, uh, I think, you know, we, we were all kind of in the same boat when we arrived, like you said, you, you know, you had people from South America in, in different locations uh, around the world. Um, but I think we were all just kind of wait, like the rest of us were just kind of waiting to see who would show up and where they'd be from and, and just to kind of see how many of us are out there. So yeah, it was, that was the first time 
I'd ever been exposed to something like that. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we have a, a, wheel, uh, a wheelchair tennis is, uh, you know, it's, it's a decent size here. So we, we do a fair amount of that. And uh, one of my friends is heavily involved in that here. So she all, uh, asked me one time when I was a teenager in high school, if I wanted to play wheelchair and, you know, I didn't think much of it at the time, but, uh, you know, I was playing on my high school team. And, and so at that time, it was not something that uh, I was really ready to get into. Yeah, no, I mean, I, that's just, you know, where we talk to um, wheelchair tennis is great. Like, and if, if you're able to play tennis in any way, just, you know, it shouldn't matter about how you play. Um, yeah. But uh, so what was your overall take on the, the talent level and the other players from that uh, tournament in 2016? It was, it was pretty good. I mean, it, I mean, let's face it, you got a guy there that is related to Alex Karecha, who is, who is uh, a great player, um, you know, in the, in the nineties. And, um, you know, so it, it, the talent level I thought was, was very, very high. Um, so uh, I think it also, you know, it's nice to see that tournament present opportunities for people that, um, were both high level and also maybe um, people that were just trying to find something else to get into. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you made some new friends there uh, besides just you know, with me, you made other friends. Yeah, good, 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 good. So what was your take? Because I know for me and we talked several times after the tournaments and the tournaments and consequential years, but um, we would always have like a big group meeting and we would have people talking and telling, you know, hey, look, this is what we need to do to spread things. Over the years, what, how did you take that information in that, you know, was being disseminated or like, you know, said per se in those meetings? How did you take that in and receive it? I think for me, it, it just kind of showed, again, this was the first tournament that we had had. So I think it really just kind of showed that nobody was really sure how we should approach it. You know, right. was, at that point, it was all very theoretical um, as, as to how this was going to happen and what was going to work and, and what may not work and, and things like that. I think people were just trying to figure out how to, like, how to experiment, basically. Right. So I think that was kind of my big takeaway is nobody was really 100% sure, but obviously there were a lot of different ideas which is a yeah. good thing. So b between 2016 and I know you were there in 2019, I, I didn't get to play, unfortunately, I was injured. Um, but uh, 2019, do you think the group meeting was a little better than 2016? I do. I, do. I think, uh, yeah, obviously we had had a couple of years um, to figure things out and to, see, and, and to kind of take it in a direction that we thought uh, would be a good direction to go in. Um, obviously, there were like the actual tournament. Tournament itself was certainly organized, and it it, it felt like something that had been up and running for a period of time. Um, right. And so, I think, like I said, it was just kind of about diving in and figuring out, kind of as we as we went, because you know, finding players for um, a, a normal tennis tournament is hard enough, or can be. Um, let alone something that has very specific, uh, you know, requirements. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, for us um, down here, we started out there, three of us, and then, you know, the, the committee grew. But, I mean, you see, like, dude, I was like, your color hair, and, and I'm the silver fox now. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, but, you know, we tried our best down here every year, and it was frustrating for me a couple of times. I know you and I had always talked about just getting beer and catching up, but you're getting pulled in so many. So it was like sometimes for me frustrating because I didn't get to like actually go and, you know, mingle with my friends and see people that, uh, you know, I haven't seen in a long time. But uh, let me ask you something. So if this was available to you as a child, if you were able to play both able body and just play on your tennis team, just being Carl, Let's take disability away. You're just mm -hmm. Carl. But then someone says, hey, look, I got another opportunity here. It's called adaptive standing. You can play against other people with uh, you know, similar conditions to yourself. Do you think that would have benefited you as a child? 
Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I think it's it's tough to to really say what I would or wouldn't have done differently, if, if anything, um, just because it wasn't. Um, but obviously, you know, when you're a kid and you're, you know, you're, you're playing on equal footing with, with everybody else, um, you know, it certainly would have made that transition maybe a little simpler, uh, had, it, had something been available. Um, I remember the first thing that I ever did for tennis that was, it, it was in high school and it was just something that uh, Robin Burton had had put on and was part of and, and was running. She invited me to go to that. And that was kind of the first I had ever seen of anything like that. Right. And it was really, really cool. It was really cool to see because, um, you know, at this stage in my life, I like to, you know, I like to see what's possible for other people now. Yep. Um, and and kind of show what's possible through my tennis. Uh, but certainly if something like that had been around uh, when I was a little bit younger, I absolutely would have gotten involved in it. And um, not just like physically or whatever, but do you think like, how was it meeting other amputees or had you met other amputees before your, your, your peer age, you know, kind of growing up or sporadically, or maybe that just was this, was that the first time you met others that enjoyed the sport of tennis and it was just tennis? Uh, yeah, I, I really hadn't met anybody else, uh, quote, quote, like me, um, who was, who was trying to do what I was trying to do. Um, right. So it was, uh, certainly growing up for a long time, it was, you know, everything, uh, and everybody that I was playing with, things were two, two levels harder, uh, that for me than they were for everybody else. So, yeah, uh, that was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. Yeah, no. Yeah. That, I mean, I, I feel the same way, man. And mine was through track and field and swimming in 2000 when I got out of, um, you know, high school, but they didn't really, they, yeah, they didn't offer tennis. They'd get, you know, let us do a, me and this other above knee guy played in a tournament, but, um, but yeah, no, but yeah, I mean, it seems like we got some new good leadership around the United States. We'll see, you know, kind of where things go, but um Man, I really appreciate you just taking a couple minutes here to chat with me. Uh, you know, it's been more yeah. than that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Right? Get this set up for an hour, but um, and then yesterday. But uh, hey, uh, I just want to say how much I respect you and uh, as a tennis player and as a person, man. You know, you're a pretty solid guy and uh, helped me through a couple of um, you know things on trying to figure out you know why you know, what's preventing me from moving forward in other areas. So wanted to thank you for that. Keep balling, sir. And uh, yeah. I'll see you again real soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a pleasure, Jeff. Uh, let's uh, like to see where this goes. I'm going to throw your Yonex up there a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Rep represent the Yonex. Here we go. Uh, rip, rip. Uh, half dip. Yeah. Mab squad. Yep. Got to right. love. All right, man. Hey, it was really good talking with you. We'll do this again. Okay. Sounds good, Jeff. Take Next care. Next time, just uh, we'll, <laughs> it won't be this long. There we go. All right, man. Tell mom and dad to say hi. Bye. I do. Hey, Jeff.